Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Law, My FM 101.3, and the Holliston Hub. Uh, this is Money in the Law with your host, Jay Marston from yes. the Marsden Law Group. Thank you. And I'm John Droyan from Main Effort Financial. Uh, for those of you watching on TV, you may see that we're in a little bit of a different position. We're just getting used to. Same studio. Those of you on the radio, it may affect the way we talk because I'm, I feel like I'm Ray and I, are, or Ray and I, Jay and I are sitting on a like almost on a love seat together right now and it's, we're in the we're we're, we're 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 in the this is the show right before valentine's day so it, it could be a, a preliminary there's, for a love, the there's a lovely feeling in the air well, Everyone, everyone's coming together it's that's different right, right? i'm right. like wow well, we're, right. we're closer yeah so so there's that um and uh there's money in the law which is uh, of course your show that we've been bringing to you for many years now that talks about anything and everything that has to do with money and money. finance yep. and also anything and everything that has to do with how the law applies to your life, particularly, yes. particularly your planning law, planning law and, and, and understanding laws that are going to help you to make your plan. And as we say in the practice, get you to financial nirvana. Look at that. Financial <laughs> yeah. nirvana. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of our tag. We, 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 I think we, we that's may on have, a koozie somewhere. we've trademarked that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we've untrademarked. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag yeah, as the kids would say. Not yep. really hashtag that. Nice. Uh, so, uh, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, Holliston Hub brings a, a, puts us on the television oh, uh, in the, at Holliston Local Cable Access TV. And, of course, Holliston Hub uh, is run and owned by, I think, I think he's now the primary owner or the, at least the majority shareholder, he's definitely Tom the Harmon. Shareholder. Yeah. Absolutely. The yep. Tom Harmon is All here the today. Shares. Yeah. Yep. And, Tom, Chair I apologize. I'll, I'll say this on the air. Tom, who is, I mean, without question, the most dedicated guy to, like, this whole project well, here, right? Who, who couldn't be more dedicated? Every, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. I, I can I can set my watch, but he texts me. He's like, "Hey, hey, John, sorry to bother you. You know, like you so like you know, uh, is money in the lot? As I or I could easily just be like, "Hey, Tom, you know, we're on this sure. week or something." Yeah. yeah. So then and he texts back a sad emoji. <laughs> but unfortunately, I get that text, and I'm like. Hmm, I'm not sure. And then I'll. What day and then, is it? And, and, what day is it? And then I'm not. Sure. And then I'm like, well, I I really have to check with because as you for many for all of you fans out there, you know that money in the law doesn't happen. It's not. We've never done a money in the law show with Jay, just Jay or just me. No, it's always that's, been a team effort. Yeah, always that, a team that's, effort. That's, it's kind of like a McCartney Lennon thing. Like it's yeah. It's that's how it is. No matter what, even though I wrote all of Let It Be, <laughs> Jay is, is. We give each other co. Yeah. Writing credits, we exactly. agreed to that right at the beginning. Exactly. It's just easier. There's no, you know, no. Yeah, there's no haggling. You know what? There's no, no, no forty nine fifty one. It's right down no, the middle. That's no, right. No, no sixty four. One, 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 one check. Yep, that's, that's how right. we do it. That's yeah. right. One that's check, right. and we'll figure it out. And although I can only imagine if one that check actually did come, I'd, there may be some. I'd give it to you. I'd, yeah. I'd give it to you. <laughs> and probably in the in the interest yeah. of unity, I, I would give it to you. In the interest of speed, let's keep this as one check, John. Good idea. One check. You got this one. Yeah. And yeah, I'm on the next one. I got it. I got it. All taken care of. All good. All good. Do that. Do that with Jay Marsden yep, on I'm a on Sunday it. brunch yep, uh, I'm on and it. see how that works yeah, out for you. That's right. That's right. right. So uh, so how are you doing today? Great. No yeah. complaints. No complaints. Everything's good. Everything's good. Our kids are doing well. Everyone's where they're supposed to be. Everybody's good. It's I like good. that. Yeah. Tom, and you're good? Great. Tom's great. Tom's okay. Great. So you know, what this, you know what this show is? This show is, uh, it, you know what's tomorrow? I do know what the show is. I've been on it for a while. But uh, but tomorrow, you know what tomorrow is? It's Super Bowl Sunday for those because for those of you who are listening today. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. And also to be to be to be transparent, this is we are actually it's Wednesday. Yep. We are recording this show for Saturday, Saturday at eleven, which is what you guys are listening to right now. Uh, so this is our Super Bowl show. Super tomorrow, Bowl edition. Tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday. So uh, we may reference some of the old, some of the throwback Super Bowls if, you know, if we want to sure. talk a little football. Put you in the mood. Put yeah. you in the mood. This yeah. year's yeah. Super Bowl should be an interesting game. Oh, it should uh, yeah. be. It, it should be. Yeah. For, for all you Patriots fans out there, you, you're, it's probably a tougher Super Bowl Still than Still crying usual. in your beer. I know. Well, yeah. you don't I know. have. I, know. I mean, you're used to having skin in the game, right? Yes. You're used yes. to being there. You're used to kind of having, or at least having some, some emotion because you're, you know, Know, your your team or your quarterback that used to play for you is actually going to the Super Bowl and winning another one without you, which is well. It is awkward too when you th when you think about it for so many years. Now they put all the optics up on the screen. You know they get the you know back when like the, when the season was still going on and they had everybody who was in the wild card hunt and all this stuff. stuff and you didn't see a Patriots logo anywhere. No, you were the only, nope. you, you were like nope. one of three teams that actually didn't yes, matter. I know, and yep. that's yep. Yeah, that's I unfortunate. Know. And it's a shame. It's I a, know. It's an, and, I know. But you know what? 
that's that's the way that's, that's the way, the way, the way NFL it goes. works. Parody yeah. in the NFL. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's right. And you guys, uh, and I say you guys because I'm although I I don't dislike the Patriots. I know. I'm not. I know. I'm not a, yeah, not I'm not a natural Giants. born I know, Patriots fan. Yep. You don't come to the national. Um, you yep. guys. Had 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 the 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 run of that no one else could. We had a window do. of dominance. We had a little window of dominance. Uh, not I'll more than a little that. window. Yeah, it was know, a, I'm trying to be humble here. Yeah, I got you. It was a you. twenty year window. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Where you guys were always there. Yeah. And it got to be the point where like, oh yeah, of course we won the AFC East. Of course we're going. We did to right. The, we did. We won that again. I mean, we just kind of we're, like we, I already bought the jersey. I don't even need to see the game. Why we're we're in the AFC Championship. We're not hosting it. Why? Why is it not a Gillette? All you all you season ticket holders that were just like. I, like I, you know, like the all you're, you get. You're from, laying out. You're laying out your calendar for the year. You're like, oh, and then we have the championship game yeah, here, and then we we'll get a couple of playoff yeah. games here. All you get for Christmas gonna, yep. is cold weather gear because, yep. you, of course, I'm yep. going to be at the stadium yep. in January. Yep. Of course, I'm going to be there. We have yeah. home field advantage, of course. Yeah, circle, so, yeah. circle. So we're busy through February, right? We can't do anything. That's, That's right, honey. Okay. No, no yeah. trips, no trips. <laughs> yep, no, nothing, nothing. So, uh, so not this year. Not, not this year. This nope. year, you plenty get of open, plenty of open, plenty of open space on the calendar this year. Yeah, that's right. There's open space on the couch. Yep, which is where you're going to be watching. Yeah, that's the exactly game. right. That's exactly um, right. So yeah, so so uh, we'll we'll touch on the Super Bowl a little bit. Sure. And, and uh, actually, when I was I was I was reviewing some old Super Bowls because that's the thing. I, I mean, when you well, go this back, is it's tis the season, right? They're right. all over like ESPN and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was reviewing some old Super Bowls. And, um, you know, and, and, and I can, you know, that was, you know, when we were kids, like that's when the Super Bowl, that's how I always know how old I am. Right. Because whenever they say, hey, it's Super Bowl 58, I'm, I'm, I always, I'm two years behind the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah. So, so I wasn't alive when Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers won their first two, the back to back, you know, one and two. It was, I, I was born the year the Jets won the Super Bowl, as you were go. you. Yes, yeah, that's the, right. That's yeah, right. The Jets yep. won the, their, the Super Bowl, the Joe Namath, the famous Joe Namath yes, Super Bowl, yes. Hall of Famer Joe Namath. Great Joe was, Namath. Yeah. 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 Classic. Who doesn't really belong in the Hall of Fame? But you Broadway know what? Joe, baby. Back yeah. then, yeah, that's back right. Back then, yeah. they voted him in. They, yeah. He, he yeah. needed to be there, right? Because we, we called it, right? Yes. Because that yeah. was the thing. So we'll touch on that. Uh, but we also uh, did we finish our, our? Did we finally wrap up the uh, the, the late stage planning? The late stage the late planning. Start? We did. I believe we did. They were good. I believe okay. we did. Yeah, I believe right. we did. We talked about it, so we got that to the finish. So and and did you have uh, did you have something you wanted to to, uh, to discuss today? I always have topics. Right? Okay. Well, all, I mean, if, no if, you, to if you do, then then by all means, I'm I'm happy to talk about your topic today. All right. All right. Fantastic. So we were going to talk about the we were talking about Medicaid planning. Right, because we haven't talked about that in a while. We have, we, we've been talking a lot of estate planning, talking a lot of probate. No, no, it's not. I saw the yawn. I got <laughs> it. I said, but we're going to talk about the transitioning of a loved one from a living facility to a nursing home and how that works in the Medicaid that's good world, to know. That's what it, that looks like. Yeah, and I say this because this is the most tension-filled or one of the most tension-filled parts of this process. That reminds me of a tension-filled part, pro, uh, tension-filled processes. When I had a Super Bowl party back in 2007, yep. when your undefeated Patriots came and played my New York Football oh, that's Giants, correct. I remember right? that. Yep. And I that was that. The, the tension was when the game was over. And everybody, all my Patriot fans, neighbors that were in my basement. That wanted to gather as fast as possible. Oh, no, they didn't want to. They did. They yeah. walked out the door and <laughs> didn't say thank you. And, yeah, so there was, there was, so that, that, I imagine the tension was, is, Same is thing. very, is Same. very it, similar. There's a lot of overlap. A lot of overlap. <laughs> very much similar. Okay. Approach. All right. So we're going to talk about Medicaid, Medicaid transition planning. We're going to yes. talk about the Super Bowl. And we're going to talk about the one more thing we're going to talk about is We Are the World. All right. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about Because right. I want to, because I, I missed it. I missed Netflix the talk. documentary. I want to talk about You weren't here. Really. Uh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm having a big 80s throwback time. And it, I'm almost like like a midlife thing. Like right. I am. Is that why you it. rolled up here in a DeLorean? Is I'm, that what that was all about? I is wish. That, that <laughs> Actually, I rolled up here in a Chevy S10 Blazer, which is what I was driving back then. All right. Uh, don't go away. Are those we'll, coaching shoes? <laughs> we'll be right back. I know. I still sold spot belts. <laughs> Getting a pair of those? They match my shirt. <laughs> and you're back. My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, main for Financial. Tommy on the bag. It's kind of like a throwback 80s day here in the studio. Yeah. John's uh, dressed like he just stepped out of a Millie Vanilli catalog uh, was, and uh, a video there. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's all good. It's I all wish. good. I, I mean, look, I've gotten compliments those on hammer these. pants? <laughs> those, <laughs> all right. Uh, I, can re- I can remember these words coming out of my mouth when we were, about, when we were getting married and we were interviewing bands. Sure. We were going to play it. We're like, do you play MC Hammer? <laughs> uh, you... 
I, I, I it, this is a, it's a it's a deal it's a breaker. It's a must. It's, it's a, must. a deal breaker. Yep. If you don't put, and they're like, of course we have MC. And then and this guy, you know, is some like kind of tall, lanky, skinny, long haired white guy. He's like, and he's like, and I have my, and he shows me his pants. Hammer I'm pants. like, go. good enough. Yeah, good enough. That's Here good we stuff. go. Yeah. yeah, you're on. All right, <laughs> you guys are hired. <laughs> Done. Sign the contract. So we're talking Medicaid transition planning. So what do I mean by that? What I'm talking about is somebody. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on, before you get going. Please, go before, ahead. Because this is what happens, folks. You know it. Tommy's laughing. He knows it. He gets on a roll. And, and, it's, and it's because you're passionate about passionate it. About it's the because topic. you care. Passionate about the work. Because you, and you know about it. Right. And, and, okay. you know, and you know the importance of it. You, you see, you, it's what you do for a living. Every, okay. You see it right. every single so day. So what are you stalling me for? I'm, I, I'm stalling you because I just want to ask a question. Again, for our listeners who kind of jump. Because we, we, start to, we throw these things out. And, it, you know, because that's what we do, right? That's our lingo. Yeah, you're like, I am, yeah I mean, let's talk about Medicaid plan, right? And so how many times... Have you come across where people are like, where you say, oh, yeah, uh, Medicaid. And then the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, yeah, I have to sign up for that when I turn 65 because that's something to do. Excellent so, point. So I just want to I just want to I'll give you just, that one. Just slow yeah. it down. So so explain to me in in in, 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 in a, like right? we do, yeah. like we do. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. the difference between Medicaid. OK. And Medicare. Got so it. everybody. So we know we're talk, We're not we're talking about. Well, we're talking great about point. Medicaid. So we didn't get a lot of phone calls about, you know, my elbow hurts. Who should I go see? Was my doctor <laughs> covered? Things like that. So what we're talking about, what we're leading up to here is the idea of Medicaid planning. And when I say Medicaid planning, I'm separating it out from Medicare. Medicare is your health insurance that everybody, for the most part, has access to when you turn 65. That covers hospitalizations. That covers doctor visits. That covers your knee surgery, your hip surgery. It covers anything that's related to your health care. And then there's Medicaid. It's always the hip. Yep. It's always the hip always and always the, the knee. Always yep. the knee. Yep. And then there's the Medicaid piece of it, which is the what happens if I need long-term care care in a nursing setting, in a 24-7 setting, and I can't pay for it because I'm out of money. Medicaid is the government program that you can apply to. It's asset-based. They look at your numbers. They look at your finances. They look at what you did with your money. And the idea is that they're going to talk about whether or not you qualify to have the government, have Medicaid, cover the cost of your care in a nursing home. If you do go down that path, you, you would be what we consider a dual eligible. You would keep both coverages. You always keep your Medicare coverage because you might get sick, you might get pneumonia, you might need to go to the hospital, you might need to get treated for something. And then you have your Medicaid coverage, which covers your, st- your stay or your time in the nursing home. And what we're talking about right now is this Medicaid planning, which is a transition out of an assisted living setting, which is usually a private pay arrangement. Most assisted living facilities do, are literally pay-to-play arrangements where if you're in an assisted living, they're telling you it's five grand, it's six grand a month, there's a care plan. It's a residential model. This is when your health fails to the point that you need to transition to Medicaid. Sounds great. Yes, I know. Sounds fun. It sounds, but it's we always, you know. I think the the one of the important things is that, and you you mentioned this, but I just want to like reemphasize this is that, and this is the way we kind of, you know, again, we're not we're, we're not as a, we're not as like a Fluid. as gifted and eloquent lawyer or sure. uh, legal office as you know. This we're just you know we're we're a financial planning firm, Got it. and and we have to talk about it. And it's one of those things. But you know, again, I, I'll often say I I'm not a lawyer. However, I stand next to one every Wednesday, and uh, I do a show. So I, I have some legal some sure. I yeah. have some I have some legal kind of uh, you know like re- reverberated or some or some just some, osmosis exactly. I yeah. got some I have some stuff that's kind of it's kind of rubbed off over the I picked up over the years sure. right. Um, but the way we would, way I always talk about Medicaid or, or the, the, the concept of Medicaid or long-term care is that you're going to, you're going to get it. If you need it, you're going to get it right. That's, that's the, well, the maybe. bottom. You're talking about a nursing home? You're talking I'm about ta- paying I'm, for it? I'm, I'm, no, no. I'm talking about if you need it, right, the money aside, if you need it, you're going to get long-term care. If you, there, there's no, it's not like the, that you're going to have to sit in your house and not get long-term care if you need it. You're going to get it. It's just a question of who's going to pay for it, right? Well, let's talk about that. I mean, that's a great point. So p- people will ask us all the time, right? Like, wh- well, what would happen, right? What, if, you know, I mean, talk this through from a care perspective. You're, you're home. You're, you're paying for, you know, maybe to care. What usually happens is you're home and you start getting care at home 
and your family's helping you out, right? right. That's, hey, let's that's go check the, on mom. That's the, that's the, that's the, the progression, the right? Let's go here, check yeah. on mom. Let's go check on dad. Oh, I came over to see how you were doing. I fixed all your, 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 your med box with all your pills that are in it. And I, I dropped off some, you know, some food and blah, 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 right? That's like, that's the very beginning of that process of making sure that everybody's taken care of. And then there's other variations, there's other versions of that. But at some point, if that's not working anymore, if you're not at home or able to be at home and get that type of care, your next step in the transition is, look, the at-home thing isn't working. Maybe somebody's falling a lot. Maybe they got a dementia diagnosis, which means being at home isn't a safe environment anymore. The next step in the process is some type of assisted living facility, whether it's a memory care unit where you're in a secure unit because you have dementia and you're a wandering risk, or whether you're just living independently in the community and you're driving around and you're playing golf and you're just coming home and you're, you're as independent as you can be, but you just home isn't going to work out anymore for a whole host of reasons. And and this is and these are medical reasons. Now, you can't just leave home because like you're sick and tired of your wife or because you're yeah, because you you don't have uh because you're you you you, you want to hang out with the boys, you want to you know, well, it hang depends. Out the it depends, <laughs> depends on depends on the assisted living facility you go to. Some people go and the community is, you know, the, these communities are all very different. Some of them have a very high degree of independence and some people literally That's true. are coming and going as they please. Well, you, you yeah, I mean and there's 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 a, there's the like you said there's that progression piece but a lot of these assisted living places have kind of these independent living yes li- living living places that so it's not like you have somebody coming in and taking care of it. it's not you may not even have someone coming in or cooking for you or anything like that you just may be there and if and 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 help is close by should you need it that's right, right. and the idea is in those settings the idea is that that's in one of the, what they call a continuing care community where the idea is that look i don't want to be moving every time my health becomes more compromised. I want to be under one roof, if you will, one theoretical roof with access to the same people. And I know the staff and the staff knows me. And so, yeah, you're exactly right. You could move right through the system, you know, kind of inside the inside one complex. You know, this fourth floor is independent. Second floor is assisted living. First floor is memory care. I mean, these places exist. They're out there. It's kind of like college, right? It's kind of like, right. You move into the freshman dorm, that's right? That's exactly then, right. And then yep. you progress right up to the off campus, right? <laughs> yep. And the cliques are the same, and the people who are hanging out are the same. Exactly. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a general place to go to the dining common, get yourself some food, that's right? right. Pour, order off the menu. So, yeah. So, those exist. Some of these places have a pub down around the corner. They do. They, they, they sure, do. They, they absolutely sure do. do. Yeah. <laughs> and we visited those. So, so, the idea is, okay, well, what if that doesn't work anymore, right? If you're transitioning to a nursing home because your health has become that compromised, right? And again, no one's voluntarily making this decision. What happens is the facility is going to come to you or come to your family and say, look, we love mom and dad being here. We love them. They're great. The staff loves them. She's a sweetheart. He's a great guy. But their care needs are just too great. They exceed what our capabilities. We are a residential model, and this is a medical situation. The, The medical piece behind this is driving the bus we can no longer provide the necessary care. Now, you always have the option of bringing in more care. You could always say to the people at the assisted living, well, we'll subsidize your care with a, a live-in aid or something like that. But at some point, that gets really expensive to the point that you're trying to duplicate the same thing that might be happening at a nursing home. So what happens, right? Well, the facility is going to come to you and say, look, guys, we need to talk. You know, this, this isn't working out anymore. And we need to talk about what a transition plan looks like, right? And remember, you've probably been private paying at the assisted living facility. You might have sold a piece of property. You might have sold a home. And that is funding the time at the assisted living. But now we're talking about going to a nursing home. And so the bill is going to be more expensive. And then there's real concern. People start to really worry about, well, what about funding? You know, they, they look at the burn rate, right, on the financial side. They look at the burn rate and they go, look, how much money are we going to have left in a year? I don't know, but not a lot. We're yeah, ripping and through this, it. This is where that whole Medicaid planning comes in. And, and, and with, you know, with, by the grace of God, you've, you've planned this. You've kind of you've worked through this, in, or at least you understood the numbers. When anybody goes into a long-term care situation, right, sure. whether it be somebody coming into the house, Somebody or somebody going to an assisted living. They, that now you're you're in that. I, I I no longer can live totally independent. Correct. Right. Yep. So that that is a and and however long that lasts, it could be many years. It could be several. Who knows, right? But it, that's where you get to that point where now now we have to plan for this. We yep. have to plan. And and if you you know if you're you were a 
client of Marsden Law, you've already you've you've already talked about this. You've talked about this a long time ago. Well, every time we talk to our clients about these types of moves, we always try to say to everybody, we want you to think one move ahead. We're always asking somebody if somebody's moving out of a house, if somebody's if somebody's bringing care into their house, we're going to say to them, okay, but what? Let's talk about that. But then let's talk about what happens if this doesn't work, yeah. right? Because this is going to work for a window of time. I don't know what that window looks like. But at some it point, it could be a while. It could, could be. Could, that's like, right. It could be years, right? It could be. It could be great. It could be like something that that is a, a that is for the foreseeable future a sustainable thing. And when we talk about this sort of this move through the care continuum, you're 100 percent right. It can only go as far as we brought somebody in, they helped out, mom's health failed, dad's health failed, and here we are. That's one option, right? The other option is we got as far as the assisted living. They went there. It worked out great. They were a, a loved and respected member of the community that they were living with, and something happened, and then that's as far as we got. But then there's that last stop on the bus, right? Oh, but you know what? If they go all the way through, they go all the way to the end of the, end of the line, that's potentially an option. And so we try to sell, tell people, well, let's talk about this move, and then let's talk about what the one after this looks like. Yeah. And this Medicaid piece is what we find a lot of conversations with clients coming along with that we can helpfully say to them, this is what's going to happen. We want to help you understand transitioning out of this to a, a, a nursing home and, and what that looks like from a planning perspective because everybody gets this part confused. There's a lot of moving parts. And, and you're to the talking transition. about like the you're talking about this is it, all happening in real time. We're not. Yes. This isn't the 15 years ago we sat down with our attorney and said, oh hey, let's let's talk about this. So so if if and when or whenever if, if we find ourselves in a long term care situation how how is that going to work yeah. and and if you're you know if you if you've thought about this then you've you you may not have done anything but you've leaved, you've you, and we talked about it on the show a million times you've at least talked about it and you said okay you know what if we get to that point then we're going to we're going to private pay it it'll, it'll we'll, we will fund it ourselves we're sure. you know, we're going to sure. we're going to pay um, and or maybe we you know 15 years before we said okay if we get to that, we'd, we'd at least like to protect some of our assets, right? right so, yeah. so the plan is we definitely want to leave this house for the kids. So if we ever get it, find ourselves in a situation where we may be qualifying for Medicaid, we'd like to make sure that we don't, that the house isn't part of that. So then, you know, you can do legal things and talk about your irrevocable trust and, 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 and the steps that you can take or things like buying long-term care insurance or, you know, right, but like what we're talking about today is. We, we we didn't do any of that. Yeah, th right? this, this is or or we did it. Right, and and w whether we did it or not, we're here. Right, right? So, yeah. And some things might be protected, some things might not be protected. But this is literally the mechanical um, process of saying to somebody, so we're moving somebody to a nursing home. All right, and how does like what happens now? How does that work? What do we do? What does that look like? Because. The, the rainy day that we hoped to avoid is here. That's the idea. So with luck, if you were actually driving like to the, or your loved one to, from the assisted living to the nursing home today listen, while you're listening good day to the show, listen. you're like, can you guys get, get to the point? Because I, we're almost there. Get to so, the part. Get so to the part. so uh, we're going to tease that and uh, go to a word from some of our sponsors and come back. And we're going to talk about the actual mechanics. So don't go away. Pull over. Go back to Dunkin' Donuts. Take get a cup notes. of coffee. Back, yeah. in, the, back in the drive through yep. line. <laughs> it's good going to be a while anyway yep, that's right and uh and we'll uh don't go away we'll be right back we'll with talk. uh we're, we're gonna we'll we'll tell that we'll tell the rest of the story and you're back my fm 101.3 jay marsden with the marsden law group john trohan main effort financial tom in the studio working the camera and we are talking medicaid planning we're talking about the transition point we're talking about you know, all the things that we've talked about on the show a hundred times have kind of come to fruition and now it's a, a situation where you're trying to figure out what does it look like when we sort of do this whole somebody's going to a nursing home. Tell me how to do it. How show, do we do show it? me the mechanics. So here's the first thing you gotta show keep, me the money. Here's the first thing you gotta keep in mind. That you, we have to find you a bed. We're gonna find you a nursing home, right? That, I know there's a lot of them out there. You probably visited a bunch of them if, you, if this has been something that's been in your in your in your in your wheelhouse in terms You've of probably down visited the road. a bunch of them, you know, over the years. Yeah, just yeah, just, just for giggles, right? Hey guys, what are you guys doing? But but if you're looking at it, if you're thinking about it, if it's out there, you say to yourself, we should probably do a little bit of homework. The challenge is you're going to find a bed for somebody, and mm -hmm. then they're not as available as you might think they are. As a matter of fact, there was an article in the Globe this week that talked about how the inavailability or the lack of availability of of nursing home beds 
is kind of causing a bottleneck further upstream for people who are trying to get discharged in the hospitals because they get no place to put people if and they that's need a, that's a big to get deal, some more right? rehab. Because you you know remember this is one of those things where you know you you know maybe you planned it maybe you haven't but in your mind you're like okay. I, I don't want to, because it's it's not fun to talk about, right? No, it's not it's fun not. to nope. think about. It's not fun to be like, hey, so when you're done with this assisted living, you're going to that nursing, you know. Yeah. So so by the time you get your head around to be able to plan it and talk about it, it's like, oh, well, you know what? Best case scenario is that we're going to go to this nursing home, which is, you know, eight miles from the house, you know. And, and then you get to the point, like you said, where they don't have availability. That's right. So now you're like, now what do we do? Right? Well, that's a great point. People will come in and they'll say, you know what? There's three places that we're looking at. We've driven by them. We haven't visited them yet, but we've gone by them. We know where they are, and they're local. And they're easy for us to get to. And you're 100% right. Great. We don't even know if they have beds. And by the way, for some strange reason, beds for men are even scarcer than just beds, right? So finding yeah. a male bed, so if you're talking about planning for dad or an uncle, that is that adds an, another level of complexity to it because those beds are even harder to find. So the point is, we may end up moving somebody to some place that you might not love, but it's not forever. We can move somebody later down the road. So that's, yeah, that's good. The objective is to try to get somebody somewhere if they have to go somewhere, and it may not be their forever home. We can move them later. Now, when we're talking about applying for nursing home care for somebody and you're moving somebody, you hit the nail on the head earlier. Yes, you can always private pay. You can always write $13,000 checks for as long as you have $13,000 checks, and the nursing home will gladly cash those checks. Yeah. Okay. In fact, they're they're much happier to cash. They love it. They love it. They're very happy to see you roll the bill. But if you're not in that position where you're not cashing $13,000 checks, if you are thinking, well, I'm just going to apply for Medicaid right from Jump Street, the nursing homes are very concerned about what what they call a Medicaid pending admission, which means coming in right from Jump Street you think you're going to apply for Medicaid. And the reason is, if you're applying for Medicaid and you think that that's going to be the payer source on day one as you're trying to get into the nursing home, remember, the nursing home has no idea about the success or failure of your Medicaid application. Okay? So if you, and remember, Medicaid takes about six months to work its way through the system. So if you come into a nursing home and you get admitted, and you think that you're going to be Medicaid from day one, in the nursing home's mind, and the administrator at the nursing home's mind, what they're thinking to themselves is, if it takes us six months to get a decision from Medicaid, and the decision is no, no. <laughs> you're not eligible for Medicaid, somebody has to pay the nursing home's private pay bill there's a bill. Six month period. There's a right. There, and six months, or or if you if you're staying there, right? Or if you if your your choice is to stay there, and because this is working, sure. this is great. Yeah. It's working out. This is this is where we want to be. The bottom line is someone's paying for it. Well, that's right. So if you get denied, the folks at the nursing home are going to say, "I'm just bummed out that you get denied. That's a real. That's unfortunate." By the way, six times thirteen. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, here's your bill. We need that check to be paid. ASAP, right yeah. away, because you didn't get Medicaid. So this is why, when everybody says, I can't believe it's so confusing, it's so hard, it seems... This is what they're worried about. They're worried, they don't know anything about you. You're coming in day one, and if it blows up for a whole bunch of reasons, it's going to be a problem. So they're real skittish. So this, again, this is why this part, finding a bed, do you have some money to private pay, a little bit of time coming in the door? How are you going to pay when they get in there? What's going to happen? This is the part that people are real angst filled about because they don't know what's going to happen and neither does the nursing home so it's a it's it's this kind of like it's this dance of well do we trust you don't we trust you and we try to tell clients all the time if you're working with somebody on this that's part of your story right we're trying to get mom into a nursing home trying to get dad into a nursing home and we're working with a law firm that does this all the time and then we can call the admissions people and say look we're looking over the application. We're looking over the paperwork. Gonna... There doesn't seem to be any landmines in here based on what we're seeing right now. I can't speak to it perfectly, but there's nothing that we see that's causing us, you know, that's giving us pause. Is that going to be okay? And then sometimes, depending on the relationship, if it's a, if it's a facility that we've worked with quite a bit, they'll say, okay, we got it. We're, we, we know that this is a low, there's a low threat here that we should be worried about something, but it's real. So, so here's a question. So the let's say that Medicaid application goes in and it gets denied for whatever reason. Sure. And, and, and the reason could be, I mean, give some examples. The so biggest if, reason is gifting. 
This is the biggest. I was reason. going to say the, the reason is is that you you, you gave money away yep. in in the attempt of trying to to alleviate your yourself from your own assets, but you gave it away and you gave it away inside of that five year window. Correct. Yeah, you, and you might have been given great advice. We hear this all the time. Jay, the tax person told us we could give away eighteen thousand dollars a year, and we did that. Okay, that's tax advice. It's not that's, Medicaid advice. That, it's different advice. Yeah. Those two worlds don't talk to gift. each other. Exactly. They don't so, talk to each that, other. And that's the thing. Like gifting and Medicaid, and we've said it. I mean, we, you've made a, a career out of it. it. It's two different things. Right. That's it's, right. It, they're, they're two different animals. They, they accomplish two different tasks. One has nothing really to do with the other one. That's right. That's right. So what was so your question was what? If, so it blows up. And so, so, right. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the, I, I run the nursing home. It's, it's a business, right? I, ha, yeah. I have, I, I have to, and so I have somebody who's been there who, you know, if, if I'm in there or somebody's been there for six months, that's what, $78,000 yeah. that, that, that is owed to us. And your Medicaid application, you say, well, we can't afford to go here because it's too expensive. At the end, someone's got to pay that. Or if you're going to stay there, someone has to pay well, that. The nursing home's looking for 80 grand. And they make no mistake about it. They are looking for 80 grand. They so, want the so, check. So, so is that a common thing? Like, will, will nursing homes, will, how, how will they, the, is it, do they, does this old fashioned, we're going to sue you if you well, don't Well, they're going to say to the family, who's paying the bill? Yeah. Right? And of course, everyone's going to sit there and go, I, I don't know who's paying the bill. Or they're going to say, well, dad's, it's dad's bill or it's mom's bill. And if you can't pay the bill, then they're going to say, well, guess what? You can't stay here. All right. You know, we're not a charity. We're not required to keep you. You can't stay here. You're not a, you don't have a payer source. And so then you're going to leave and then think, and, and they're going to, they're going to want you to either make a decision. Someone's either getting a home equity line for 80 grand and oh, by the way, get it for more than 80 grand because the $13,000 bill keeps coming. And then you have to go someplace else. And guess what those people are going to want to know? Hey, how come you're, Where leaving? you're coming from? How come yeah. you're leaving Joe's how nursing home coming over here, here to yeah. Al's nursing home? Well, are you applying for Medicaid? Well, um, yeah, that's our plan. I mean, look, these, they, these people talk. They know. They know the system. They know what's going on. So you potentially become almost like, like, like radioactive. Like nobody wants to deal with you because you get no. And so where do you have to go? You're going to go home to that's somebody's right. house. You're going, you're going, you're going home to somebody's kids. house. You're going exactly. home to the kids. Exactly. Right? This is the fallback. This is the default. And this is, this is that we talk about how, how men, uh, it's harder to find. I mean, the last thing on God's green earth is that my kids want me, oh. like when I'm when I'm nursing home ready, come back to the house, yeah, right? That's right. Oh, dad's here. <laughs> Great. How long is he staying? Oh, and oh, as oh, by the way, tell, he you, wants. And, and tell, tell your spouse, by the way, dad's here for a visit. Yeah. How long? Well, Probably a while. I don't know. It's it's out of our hands. Who's cutting my toenails today? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's the stuff, right? So that's what you're worried about. So this transition part is difficult. And then when you get to, let's assume you get to the nursing home. Let's assume that we're going to put the application in. A common question that people ask us all the time is, well, what happens with their money? What happens with the social security check, for example, that mom or dad are getting? Well, remember, the requirement is you're going to pay that social security check to the nursing home as their care. So right from Jump Street, that's what we're going to do. You don't have to pay the private pay rate. You can pay the Medicaid, you know, you're, you're part of the Medicaid process rate while you're waiting for Medicaid to kick in. But you have to do it. Don't, don't not do it because let's say you do get approved in six months and your contribution to your care was $2,000. The nursing home is looking for twelve grand. They want what your contribution was every single month. So you have to pay that. And this is how it works. You just keep getting the checks. Social Security doesn't automatically route that check to the nursing home. They don't not give it to you anymore. You're going to keep getting checks every month. And you're, what you're supposed to do is then turn a check right over to the nursing home. Everybody asks this question. But Jay, they're supposed to have under $2,000 in their name. Yes, they are. And when they apply for Medicaid, they will have under $2,000 in their name. And yes, you will get a check, a pension check, a social security check. And your amount of money, and your amount of money, over two. (laughs) And your amount of money will go over the $2,000. That's when you get on that Mohegan Sun bus. And then you're writing a check right to the nursing home. So it goes over $2,000. And it goes back under two thousand. That, that is there's fine. That, there's that weekend, That's that forty eight hour float where you try you get down there, yeah, get in front fine. of a machine, That's fine. start the playing bandit. a little Pull bit. The yep. That's allowed. That's, they they know it's gonna happen. You have thirty <laughs> days all of it. to do something with that money. It comes in, it goes out. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Everybody worries about it. What do I do? My money it's only over for a couple of days. It's not a problem. That's how the system works. That's what happens.
Yeah, and it, it's again, this is you know, this is a this is a really serious thing. This is like a, this is a really serious time in, in people's lives for for everybody. For for of course, for the person who's now like advanced in age and advanced in like you know their health has declined to sure. where they they need this level of care. They're going to a place where there's a lot of other old people that are in the same kind of boat that they're in, right? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty to the process. So everybody's on edge. And you're talking about big numbers. You know, we've talked about on the show before. What's the statistic? Most people don't have the ability to write a check for $400 if that was the emergency expense that they were suddenly hit with and they weren't aware of it. So now let's add $13,000 to that emergency that people may or may not have known was coming. And most people put this aside, they put it off until the absolute last minute. And so then you're starting to have some challenges because you don't have the liquidity to make some decisions. If you have some money, you manage this transition, it's a lot easier to manage it with some money in the bank because you can become a private pay candidate at the nursing home. Yep. And that's a very attractive position to find yourself in. But if you're coming in literally with your pockets turned out because you waited until the absolute last minute, that's going to make the process a little more challenging. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. We have a question coming. I'm going to say it out loud just so we remember yes, we what it was. So, so we can think about it during the break. I love it. So everybody can think about it during the commercial break. Um, is so if I'm if I'm savvy, I'm, I'm a savvy planner, and I say okay, and I've done my math, and I'm like okay, I know the nursing home that I'm I'm going to go into, sure. and and I know that the, it, my Medicaid application is going to take six months. The question is, when can I uh, start my application for Medicaid? Great question. And so, so like, can I start my application before I have I, I'm, I've I've spent down or given or whatever whittled down my to two thousand sure. dollars? So that's the question I like to come back to right it. after this I break. All right, uh, don't you go away? I know you're all on the edge of your seats. So, so, like, you know what? It, it's not a comfortable conversation. No, but, this you probably, yeah, you, but you probably get another pen because you ran out of the first one. Be, right well, you're like, down. you know what? Maybe I should listen. So keep doing that and don't go away and we'll be right back. And you're back. Money and Law, My FM, 101.3. <laughs> Jay Marsden with the Mars and Law Group. John Drohan, Main for Financial. Tom in the studio. And the question prior well, before, to the break. Before we go to the question is, uh, I just wanted to, uh, in my mind, some, someone, I uh, was talking to one of my clients yesterday and uh, he was talking about how he has. Uh, you ever have clients that have what, what, what I call? I, I call it folding money. Oh, I've had a couple, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And and so, but they have an inordinate amount of folding money, or you know. And I'm like, what are you doing? You just like it's it's like you're kind of just giving some money away because of inflation and everything. Yeah. But you but uh, this guy, <laughs> he's a he's one of my old buddies from the army. He's got some Ziploc bag or like oh, some yeah. shrink wrap. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. He's got like, he's got like narcos folded money. Right. And, and so we're, we're kind of yucking it up about this. And, and, and he brings, and he says to me, he goes, yeah, all I need is lawyers, guns, and money. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I almost, and my heart, near was like and jumped, dear. Right, my heart of hearts. And I started going, dun, 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 dun. so that's, and we don't hear it here in the studio, no, but when you listen no. to when you, when you're listening to it, you, it, when, when we come back in from the break or when we, when we leave break, you're hearing our theme song. And it's the, motivating. The late Warren Zevon looks yes. down on us and says, boys, keep up the good work. Keep up, yeah, the, good work. Keep up the good work. And as a reminder, we've been told to make sure we mention this, you're listening to My FM 101.3 broadcasting live from the jbryanday.com studios. J. Brian Day, your local emergency services expert. I might have to talk to those guys. Uh, maybe, yeah. a little, maybe a little damp in the basement. Uh, yeah, you and me both. Mm. You and me both. All right. So the question: the question is, can I apply if I if I if I plan this out? Sure. Can I apply for Medicaid prior to me spending down to my two thousand dollars? So there are so so you can apply for Medicaid technically. When you're in a nursing home, you're supposed to be in a nursing home. Nursing home. You're supposed to need important. nursing home services, right? That's what has to happen for you to be able to apply for nursing home. And the nursing homes will do what they call a screening. They will screen you to see, do you need nursing home services? If you need nursing home services, you have to get the screening. Uh, a nurse comes out and checks you out and says, yeah, you need to be in a nursing home, and that's fine. And Medicaid wants to see that that's the case, that you're not just freeloading off the system, hanging around the nursing <laughs> Free home. Freeloader. Using that as, a, you know, as, you're, as, you're, as you're getting your mail, right? <laughs> but what we have run into is, and the way it works is, if you wanted your Medicaid benefits to start February 1, that's when you're going to a nursing home, that's when someone's going to be in a nursing home, and you want your Medicaid benefits to start February 1. 
technically you are supposed to have three months, 90 days from February 1 to submit your application, right? So I could go all of February, all of March, all of April for the most part. And as long as I get my application in, whatever the days work out, by May 1, that's fine. And I can ask my med I can ask the Medicaid folks to start my coverage as of February 1. Now, so, so retro the, back. Retro, yeah. retro back, yep. Now, th that's not always the wise thing to do because, again, as we talked about, the Medicaid application process takes so long. So if you wait three months to apply and it takes you six months to get approved and you don't get approved, now you've got a nine-month window. Go back and do the math, right? Nine times 13. Now there's an even bigger check that the nursing home is looking for. But what's been happening to us lately is different facilities that we've talked to for our clients who are looking to go there, they have said to us, we want the, ma we want the Mass Health application in either before your client gets admitted here, before your client becomes a resident here, or literally contemporaneously, you know, at the same time. Right? Do so they, somebody do goes they, in. Can they give you like, a, like, a, like an acceptance letter? To, is that, does that get Well, no, they don't give us an acceptance letter. We just basically file the application that basically says, you know, where's somebody, because they want to know the application, what facility are you at? And we sort of will write in like to, to be determined or something like that. And so it's, it's been challenging because, you know, the lawyer in me says, look, I get 90 days to file this thing. And the facility says, look, you can take your 90 lawyer days. lawyer and a That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. But, but the facility says, look, that's fine. You can take your 90 days. The door is just not open, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to sort of unfortunately bend to their will a little bit to, to get us to kind of cooperate to say, look, if you want the application in when you want it in, fine. We'll do what we can to kind of get it in so that my client can get in there. That's really the most important thing. So let's make this work. So there's not a lot of let's put the person in there and then let's wait 90 days to file. You can't apply ahead of time. You can't say, I know I'm going to need nursing services in a month. Let me get this mass health thing started so that I don't, so, so that five months from now when I go to the nursing home, I've already been approved, right? So, so, That's with, not what so with that Medicaid, with, with the application, I, I'm, I'm listing all of my, all of my assets. Oh, yeah. so, so let's say I have, let's say I have $60,000 in, in a bank account, right? Yep. That's what I have. I'm putting in my Medicaid application knowing full well that I'm going to have to private pay for that for for the until I'm I'm until I'm down. I I, I guess my question is how like does that the, work? Yeah, how does does Medicaid get it? Like does Medicaid sure. do they understand and say, "Well, yeah, you're, you know, you'll be applied for Medicaid provided that this money goes I, I there's Yeah, so let's use that let's use the example. So if you wanted Medicaid to start February 1, okay? And you put down on the Medicaid application, I have $60,000. In the Medicaid world, you have 58,000 too many dollars, yep. as we say to people, right? So what Medicaid would say is, you have too much money, you're not eligible, okay? And so tell us what you did with that money to get yourself under $2,000. What did you do with the 58 grand, right? Now, if you show the nursing home, excuse me, if you show Medicaid, you paid 58 grand to the nursing home for two or three months, whatever the number is, right? Medicaid will say, well, Okay, well, you wanted the benefits to start February 1, but then you private paid with your extra money, then you private paid again, and then you private paid again with your extra money. You're approved, but your approval date's not February 1, it's May 1, for example, because you had right. the money and you paid privately. What is critically important is when Medicaid looks at that $2,000 number, like you used an example of $60,000, let's talk about if you have $2,600 in your bank account when you apply for Medicaid, Medicaid will say, you are not eligible. You are over asset. You have $600 too much. And if you don't get on that, in theory, you're never going to get eligible for Medicaid. They could kick it down. Yeah. So what happens is because of 600 bucks, you're creating this problem that says, look, I got to spend that money. You got to get down below the threshold so that you can say to Medicaid, I, 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 I qualify. Right. And 600 bucks hanging in your account. And we've had this happen. We'll be saying I mean, to somebody, it's not you got to spend 600 bucks. Not, not when you're in a nursing home. It's not. No. But I mean, even if we say to somebody, look, just go buy Like, you know, go buy clothes, go buy sweatpants, yeah. go buy shaving kits, go, go buy something. Right. Go spend sweatpants. that money on something <laughs> that you're going to need it to get it under the 2000 bucks. I, go to I know the, it sounds insane. I'm going to the old man's sweatpants but store. This is it. Put my put my 600 bucks. I don't want any change. Sweatpants. Just yeah. all, yep, all, Just everything, everything I can we've, get. We've done it. Go to Walmart. Buy all these things. You're going to need them. Spend the money on that so that we can get under that threshold. So we can get this party started. It's it can be a real problem. It doesn't. It sounds. We people say you're kidding me, Jay. It's six hundred bucks, and I'll say yeah, 
But remember, they don't see it that way. They see it as you're over asset, 600, 6,000, 6 million. In their eyes, it doesn't matter. It's just too much money. So the, the way you would do that, the way you would, would advise on this, and again, I'm, I'm guessing on this. So if I come to you and I have $60,000 and I, I got to go to a nursing home, and I know the one I want, yep. and, I, and the bed's available, the old yep. man bed's available, yep. Yep. and I'm like, look, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that, yep. and then I, I'm, and I'll go to the nursing home, and I'll say, hi, nursing home, we really, I really want to come here. How much is it? $13,000, yep. and I write them a check. Yep. So when do I start my Medicaid application? So we would say to you, you've got $60,000. Let's assume that this is the fact pattern. We're going to use the 60000 to get you in the one that you want to be in, Let's get you in the bed. You're going to private pay for, a, you know, do some spend downs if, yeah. there's, if, there's some, if there's some things that we can spend that money on. But I would say to you, let's pay the nursing home for a couple of months. Let's get you down to 2000 And you wanted your, originally, when, we, when you first walked in the door, you thought your Medicaid application was going to start on February 1. You're going to private pay a little bit. We're going to spend some of this money down. And we're going to move your start date to April 15th, just based on what the pay period looks like and what that looks like. That's how we manage that transition. But right? that seems like that would be a, I mean, again, it's expensive, right? And, and, and if I don't want to spend all my money, then that's one thing. But it, how important it is for me to get into that one place. Well, the, the key it, it, is you can't, it's the not waiting, yeah. right? If you, if, sort of, if you sort of twiddled your thumbs and frittered away that $60,000 and then you show up and you're like, oh, okay, now I need to do this Medicaid thing. And I say, well, you had 60000 six months ago. You knew this was coming. It would have been a better way to sort of utilize the, the, the end of those funds, right? Because at the end of the day, when you're doing the planning, there's a couple of big ticket items left to take care of. Did you take care of a funeral? Did you take care of some of these things? Did you hire a lawyer, right? Those are some of the things where people show up at our office and they go, well, I don't have money for that because we spent it over here. And I said, well, you spent that's it in the wrong. That's you unfortunate. You spent it in the wrong <laughs> order. You spent it in the wrong order. We take credit cards, but you spent it in the wrong order. Let's talk about what that looks like. So you're, you're spot on, which is if you're in this situation, and you're in the hundred to fifty thousand dollar range. This is when you want a meeting to happen, so that you can understand how do we land this plane, right? Yeah. How does this work going forward from here? How do we manage the transition? And I promise you, the transition is more easily managed with a couple of bucks than with zero bucks. It's yeah, a lot of work. And at the end of the day, again, you know, we're talking big numbers, right? And yeah. for and for for people, especially kind of in the generation that is that are you know, in, in that age bracket now, you know, $50,000, $100,000 could be like a, a ton of money, it could like be. a yep. metric ton. And you're like, well, guess what? You're going to spend all that money. You're going to, you're going to spend it all away oh, yeah. because on, on one thing or another. And you're going to say, well, the, the, there's the legal fee and the legal fee. It's not cheap. Like, it, like there's, like it costs money to kind of do the Medicaid right. application. Let's spend this money on the things that are going to have the most positive impact for you. Yeah, That's and, what we're talking and you, about. And, and I get it. You don't want to, you know, we, you've been talking about it for the last 50 years. I don't want to give the nursing home money, you right. know, my grandfather, my father, I don't want to give the, you may, that, that, if that gets you in the door into the the right nursing home and and, right. and positions you to that place then you're you're then i mean how much is that worth right that's how right. much how much right. is it? because you know what the the sad part about this but the reality is is that this is probably your last stop that's right and right. this is happening we're, we're not talking about something that's like okay we're not Maybe, sure this is yeah. happening like this is something yeah, where all roads are pointing everybody to this. and everybody has kind of come to that conclusion yeah. because you know what in the perfect world yeah, if, if, if my mother can stay or if I can stay at my kid's house sure. and I'm not a burden and it's okay, of course I'm going to stay there. Of yep. course. That, but it's, it may get to the point where my health just, it's too much work. Well, you bring it up. This is what we talk to people about all the time. And we say, look, we're very sensitive to the idea that this conversation about I don't want to go to, for example, a nursing home to happen. I get it. I understand it. I feel the same way. You feel the same way. Tom feels the same way. But you hit the nail on the head. At some point, your health might be out of your control. And you don't have the ability to make that determination. And you sort of have to, the way I look at it is, you have to think to yourself, look, I'll do everything I can to stay out. But if my health challenges have reached a point where that is the right, right place for me to be, then let's do this in a way that's the best for me so I can have the best possible outcome. If that means putting money aside so that you can afford a private room, so that you can have a flat screen TV, and you can have the best chair and the history of chairs in your room so that you'll be as comfortable as possible, then let's find a way to do that. And if we wait to do this planning until the absolute last minute, those, a lot of those options come off the table.
All right. So um, that's, that's we it. learned it. A, we it. learned it, it right? Transition. Right here in the J. Brian Day studio. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's a it's a hard, it's kind of a hard reality, but yeah. it, it's reality. So yeah. Yeah. so one of, I guess the you know one of the things to take away from today is you know again we we we, we harp on this all the time plan don't be afraid to talk about it don't be you afraid know, to ask questions don't be afraid to ask know exactly, your options right? yep. yep and so it's because so it's not this kind of like <gasps> anxiety it's going to be you have enough anxiety you know yeah. even if you did any plan yeah let's so, manage it as best we can all right so we didn't get to talk about the super bowl all right. we didn't get to talk about the oh, the grammys next i want week. to talk about we'll the talk grammys. next week next and we week. Did, all right, and we'll, we'll we'll talk we'll review the we'll super really, bowl we'll have an answer next week right. and we'll, we'll answer we'll, answer the we are the world and and the and the um the we are the world uh, Netflix uh, documentary. Love all right. All so, right. all right. Don't, don't, don't do anything crazy on Super Bowl Behave Sunday. Behave yourself. It's Behave, a long day. It's, it's a, a long day. It's a long day. Why they don't start it sooner, I have no idea, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> that's, it's a Vegas thing. Should all be right. on a Saturday anyway. That's right. All right. Super Bowl Sunday. That's right. Come on. What country are you from? <laughs> all right. We'll see everybody next week on Money in the Law. Have a great week.